Hello. Are we live? We are. <laughs> a lot of technical difficulties today. It wouldn't let us go live. We always set it. Croque Monsieur, one of my favorite grilled cheese sandwiches. Today we're going to be taking on the classic Parisian grilled cheese. I absolutely love this recipe. Mrs. Spielberg, take a look at this. Look oh, at that cheesy so golden good. top. If you've never had one of these, the only way I can explain a top, if you've ever had French onion soup, this today, I think, if you've never had a croque monsieur, which most people have never had a really good one, it's a game changer. This I'm going to place here at the end of the show. I'm going to cut this open and I'll show you how it's still crisp. Too many times when we have a croque monsieur, they're actually soft. You have it and the bread is soft. When I have a grilled cheese or a croque monsieur, I want something that's exceptionally crispy. How are you, Mrs. Spielberg? I'm doing just fine today. Thank you for asking. Okay. Well, I like to hear that. Okay. Croque monsieur. Uh, this is an easy recipe. What we try to do is simplify it, make it for a family or make it for a brunch. So most of the work is going to be done in the cooking in the oven. That way you've got yourself an easy croque monsieur. First thing we're going to look at is bread. We're going to be using some white, thickly sliced bread just some bread from the grocery store. If you like gluten-free bread, feel free to use that. If you like to use some um, whole wheat bread, feel free to use that as well. You can use anything you want. The one thing I will say is we always use unsalted butter. What we're going to be doing is just spreading the bread with some butter, Mrs. Spielberg, yeah? spreading both sides with butter. And the reason why we use unsalted butter, we can control the butter. Different manufacturers have different levels of butter. So we wanna be able to control that. I'm just gonna take the, do the other side. And then what we want to do once we've done that, Mrs. Spielberg, once we've brushed these with butter. Now this is a recipe, Mrs. Spielberg, that's naughty. It's yeah, one of those recipes. This one's not really great for our diet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but you know what it's one of Who those cares? splurges i what? only usually have it about once a year it's been devilishly cold in martha's vineyard that's where we live and the east coast it's just been cold it's been snow in the last few days and in the winter months i think those cozy dishes such as stews such as croque monsieur with tomato soup it's just fabulous we take the bread we, what we want to do, Mrs. Spielberg, is take the bread and then we see here, Mrs. Spielberg, a common mistake that people don't think of, and we try to teach people each week this. Whenever we make a grilled cheese or a toasty or a panini, season each side of the bread. So salt and pepper. The first thing to touch your tongue is going to be that bottom piece of bread. So please season it and the other side as well, we're just seasoning it. And then we take this and we place it in the oven at 375 Fahrenheit on an oven tray. Let that cook for about 12 minutes and then we turn the bread over. Do you keep we the crust on? We keep the absolutely. We All keep right. the crust on. Come on, this is not for the Queen of England. This is a Parisian sandwich. This is a croque monsieur. This isn't high tea. Ooh, hello. Mm. Shh, shh. The corgis barking. <laughs> when they come out, you can see that the lovely and golden. We've toasted them in the oven. When they come out, whilst they they come out, and this can be done the morning, be, you know, these can be done the morning before the brunch and assembled. When it comes out, we rub them with garlic. This is a game changer, I have this, to say. Yes. The, remember what I said to you before, the salt, the pepper, the taste with garlic. First thing to touch your tongue is the bread. It's not the filling. So we want it to really um, dance on the taste buds as soon as you have it. So we're just rubbing it with garlic and I'm gonna rub both sides in case both you get com confused, yeah. So we're gonna rub both sides. Now you'll notice this side isn't quite as dark as the other side. And the method in the madness for that is it's going back in the oven to bake for five minutes. So you can see I've rubbed both sides and got a little bit more 
pepper just a little bit more pepper to that one i don't think i was as liberal as what i was with the others and a tiny bit more salt because i didn't uh, season these ones up turning them over that side's a little bit paler because that's going to be exp exposed to the heat mm -hmm. okay so now we've got our bread done the next thing I want to do is let's go over and show you how to make a Mornay sauce. A couple of weeks ago, we showed you how to make a bechamel sauce or bechamel <laughs> sauce. Bechamel. Oh, no, bechamel would be Italian. Bechamel would be French. Um, we showed you how to make that. Today, we're going to show you how to make a Mornay sauce. A bechamel is a, what we call a mother sauce. And um, we want to show you how to make this. It's a white sauce, but it's a sauce that everybody make, or that we make quite common in the kitchen. And once you learn how to make this, this cheese sauce is wonderful with vegetables. So we're going to add some unsalted butter to a pan, Mrs. Spielberg. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to be doing is just melting the butter. Now, what we're doing here, Mrs. Spielberg, is making a roux. A roux is a thickening agent. Usually it's just a fat and it's a uh, flour. You know, when we think about um, Cajun cooking, they would be making these dark brown roux, long cooking, but they use oil as the fat. The longer you cook a roux, the thinner it gets. It won't thicken as much. So you, we're making a white roux, whereas we just cook it for about a minute. So it's different than what the Cajuns do. Uh, they would be using olive oil or canola oil when they do it. So we got into the butter, two tablespoons. Whenever we make a roux, Mr. Spielberg, it's usually equal amounts of fat, hence we're using butter and uh, flour, just an all-purpose flour we use for this. So now we've got the butter melted, and it usually takes about a minute to make a roux, a white roux that is, not a dark roux. We will do some Cajun food sometime. I'm adding the flour to the pan, and now you can see this is cooking, the roux. And this takes about a minute and we just want to cook out the flour and a lot of people say how do you know when the flour is cooked go on uh wendy wants to know where all these recipes like we can go to john's website which yeah, is johnashton.com yeah wendy will be posting this probably this week this recipe so a couple of things we're going to be doing in the near future we had some problems with the website you know when we used to do the old show they were posted on the crystal insider blog however we're going to be start posting these on the monday in april uh, actually can i just show you this yeah. I'll, I'll, i will carry on with it wendy one second uh, can you see the way that's bubbling now yeah. the flour Hours cooked out. Now a lot of folks they may say hey you've got to use hot milk to make a roux mm -hmm. as long as you just gradually add it. See the way I'm gradually adding it we mm -hmm. won't end up with lumps. So uh, classically trained anyone who would make a bechamel they would uh, make a bechamel sauce you'd always use hot milk but as long as you just gradually just gradually add it and whisk add it and whisk now bechamel remember when we're making this it's always notorious for catching on the bottom we've got a hot pan so it's thick and flour so it's always going to have the pro it could have the problem i'm just going to over whisk this a bit uh, of catching on the bottom so we want to make sure we work that bottom we know it, when it comes up to its thickness when it comes up to a boil that's when it's at its thickness okay uh, Wendy back to your question my dear why this is coming up to a boil um, we're going to be starting to adding all the recipes and all the videos to my website which is johnashton.com starting in April we're going to be moving over to YouTube um, it's a bigger audience and a lot of friends don't have Facebook so they've asked us will we go over so we'll have a video go that over to YouTube over to YouTube and we're probably going to move the shows to Wednesday nights uh, Wednesday nights about eight o'clock and the reason we'll be doing that is so over weekend everyone can enjoy the family and the friends and uh, on the on a, in the summertime we'll have an audience on a Wednesday night um, but we should have this recipe up this week currently we started on Facebook because we wanted to bring all our family over from our, our show what we were doing with crystal cruises and now now that we're here we're, we're now that everybody knows we're still alive and we're well and we're cooking we're going to be moving over and we'll and have directions of how to get on YouTube everything you we'll have all yeah. the directions we'll do a video showing you how to go it'll basically be just going along to YouTube and chef John Ashton which we post videos every week uh, other videos without mrs. Spielberg in so you may not want to tune in come here mrs. Spielberg but <laughs> Kiki, it's gonna be uh, uh, making the chicken pot pie today oh well 
the show, and I saw I saw that uh, Sheila Ben David, our neighbor, had also made it this weekend and posted it. Sheila done a beautiful yeah. pie. She made it really beautiful. Kiki, best through, I hope it goes well. Dave also made the pie as well, and he had a cracking crust. Um, Sheila had great results. Uh, her filling was was really spot on. Um, so thank you for those who've been making the recipes. And then we also had someone make a galette, I think, as well. Can you take a look here, Mr. Spielberg? Now we've got a white roux, being, be, making sure we've got a bechamel sauce. This is a quick bechamel. It wouldn't get passed in a French kitchen. In a French kitchen, you'd have to use an, uh, an onion and spiked with some uh, cloves, because I was traditionally French trained. But for what we're doing today, this is perfect. At this stage, we've got the white sauce. Now we're going to be adding some Gruyere cheese. A Gruyere cheese is a Swiss cheese, and it's between five and 12 months old and it has a lovely nutty flavour. It melts better than what a, a cheddar cheese would. And then we're adding some Parmesan cheese. And now and we're going to stir this around and we're going to melt it. And now we've got a Mornay sauce. A Mornay sauce is a classic sauce that you would have on cauliflower. Say for instance, you could use this on some um, smash, dip and smash potatoes in. Uh, you can really get creative with a Mornay sauce. If you're making paninis, you can refrigerate this, take a tablespoon out, spread it on your panini and make your paninis to order. Annabelle uh, should try this. She's on today and, uh, you know, she's yeah. been a panini maker. Annabelle makes the amazing um, paninis. Uh, she has a, a bed and breakfast here in Martha's Vineyard called a Knob Knock It. Uh, it's gorgeous and everybody loves her breakfast. Tara and Simon are the perfect uh, hosts and they make wonderful food and they're just a pleasure. So if you're ever visiting Martha's vineyard I would recommend the knob knock it in it's quaint and it's beautiful okay Mrs Spielberg you can see the sauce has melted now can you see that and it's got a beautiful consistency see the cheese is melted yeah. and now we've got a Mornay sauce that's just wonderful happy beautiful. days see that yeah Perfect. Oh, Doug's on, so say Doug! Sausages. Doug! Sausages, you cheeky monkey. Doug wants to see what I look like, but Doug, you know what? I like to be the woman of mystery and intrigue. <laughs> Doug, uh, Doug had mentioned there, uh, could we freeze dry one and send one to you? I wish she lived closer. Doug, if you ever do pass by Martha's Vineyard, please know you're welcome to stop in and we'll make you some food. Again, see, I'm going to pop this in the oven. Okay. 375, the oven's on Mrs. Spielberg. The, the shelf is about eight inches from the top. Okay, yeah. that's a pre-assembled that one. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's come over here for a moment, Mrs. Spielberg. I we saw showed that you... there's a bunch of fields. Oh, there's a sandy field, uh, I think a Wendy field, and then there's another field. I wonder if they're all related. Oh, that's awesome. That's a lot of fields. That's, that, that's, uh, <laughs> maybe they're all on a field trip. <laughs> oh, no, that was just corn. Hi <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, did you? Uh, Sandy's amazing. We have, the, we have Sally, uh, Sandy. I'm gonna just heat this up for a second. Just get it on the low heat, because we'll show you uh, this. So, croque monsieur, what does that mean? I don't know, but you look very handsome today. You have a different sweater than you normally Do you wear. know, I always wear you the look, same sweater. You, bro you broke out a, he honestly has at least 10 to 15 of that same sweater that he wears. The same sweater week. I always wear. I wear it every single day. Uh, I bought, when COVID happened, I bought 10 of them and I bought five of the same trousers and I never have to think about dressing. When I go on a cruise, or I used to go on a cruise, um, you know, you have to have your nice swanky gear as such, but um, yeah, I just fancied something different today. I thought, you know what, I'll put yeah, a different jumper on. Yeah, just change it up, that's what life's about. Okay, Mrs. Spielberg. Okay. We've made our, the sauce is cooled. Um, you want to let it cool slightly because otherwise, you know, you, you're going to scold your hand. So what we're going to do, Mrs. Spielberg, is so actually take- So this is take, just chilled. This is just chilled for 10 minutes, yeah. I'm going to take a tablespoon, about a tablespoon. I'm just, you don't have to be so pre precise, but I'm just showing you just so, you know, it is a cooking class, isn't it, I guess? No worries, Judy. I know it's daylight savings time. We're all messed up on time. And hi, Megan, our neighbor down the street who, 
has given us some lovely lettuce in the past. Hi, Megan. Hey, Megan, do you want to pick one of these up after the show? I haven't seen you forever. Yeah, feel free to come by. If you want to come by and pick one up as well. And Sheila, if you're on, Sheila, feel free after the show to come back and come by and pick one up. Okay, I just want to show you. So let's show you how to assemble these. The reason why we pre-cook the bread is... <laughs> Wait, hold on. What, what now? Doug said that your um, outfit is comforting like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood outfit. You know, the cardigans. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Good call. That's funny. Oh my gosh, Doug. Comforting food and comforting <laughs> outfits. <laughs> Live on Sundays. That's fantastic. This is why I love our audience. Oh. You know, we've only got a small audience, but I really love them. We have 45 I... people on today. That's good. Wow, that's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> We love every single oh, person. It's just here. brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. I love it. I, no, I do. We have the best audience. And they, they just, they're so good. I can't wait until we're back cruising again. I can't wait until um, another cruise line adopts me and we all go on a cruise together. And Judy, you know how much I love you. And is Deb on? Deb, Deb and Brad. Brad on, are they yeah. on? Are, they, are Deb and Brad on? They are. Yeah, I yeah. love them. They're amazing. And also, um, so we're, people were asking where. Um, where Rigby, Eleanor Rigby is. Eleanor Rigby She's is, barking her head off in her crate in the house because she wants to be with us. She's gonna, once she once she settles down a little bit, <laughs> she'll come up, become a part of the show. Yeah. Um, she, at the moment, she's, um, she's a puppy and she's a little rascal. She's a piranha on legs and she's mischievous. She's smart. Uh, I've been teaching her how to sit this week and I've been teaching her how to, um, how to lay down and she's been teaching us how to stay up all night <laughs> remarkable um, I just want to check on this mrs. Spielberg for a second and she's gonna that's cooking nicely okay mrs. Spielberg a tablespoon on the bottom I would just want to show you this okay. um, we're gonna show you a few variations over the years I've made so many croque monsieurs and I've done all different fancy types we've got some black forest ham mrs. Spielberg that looks good um, now listen black forest ham in the United States is much different than black forest ham in Germany and um, black forest ham in the United States would just be brined, dipped, and it adds some sweetener to the outside. Black forest ham in Germany is very regimented. It's regulated very much. It's got to be smoked for three months, uh, and then it's 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 uh, coated with spices. And it's actually um, in some traditional old black forest ham, it used to be dipped in cow's blood. That's how you get the black mm. on the outside. I know it doesn't sound too pleasant. And um, black forest ham in um, Germany, it has a dry Dry texture, almost like a prosciutto. It's much different than uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm. But the United States black forest ham is pretty good. So here we have black forest ham on this one. And I want to show you always, you know, croque monsieurs, there's so many. There's croque provencal with some sliced tomato on there. There's croque, another croque that you can get as well is croque bolognese. Um, we've got some short rib here, some beef short rib. Oh, yeah. So we're taking some beef short rib. And this was a bolognese that we made with short ribs. Um, beautiful rich bolognese that's just sinfully delightful um, and you can see those short ribs we pull them apart and they're just so tender and oh, with that one, one? Oh, with what? that one we'll add a little bit of crispy leeks oh, wow. and I just what I you know what I want to do today is follow the technique but please you get creative in your kitchen that's really important that we just show you some technique and you get creative let's show you a different one mrs. Spielberg here's a crab so we've got some crab mrs. Spielberg oh I think I'd like that one we're gonna spread some crab over and in the summertime I've done lobster you know obviously in Martha's vineyard we have so many lobsters so we're going to take some crab and we're going to take some asparagus so this oh. is a crab and asparagus can i request um, this one for my dinner yes you certainly Thank can you. it depends though doesn't it you know the neighbors might want that one mrs Spiel. now i'm gonna hide it <laughs> <laughs> no one's getting that one <laughs> now we've got toppings you can see how you can be creative for the top section i'm gonna go one two about two tablespoons okay one this is so rich and so good <laughs> so well that was more than two come on johnny mm. i think it'll be all over the show one that's one and two. oh uh. 
So oh. <laughs> I'm going to spread this out, Mrs. Spielberg. This is very messy. Spreading it out, okay? Okay. So you can see. Now you can assemble these sandwiches the morning of. If you're doing one of them fancy brunches, you know, in the summertime, people love to be in, in a, to do brunch, you know. Um, spread them. And these can be sliced into pieces. Don't think you have to serve a whole sandwich because it's, you know, it can be quite filling in all honesty. Spreading it out. Now, if you wanted to, you could do the cheese, but maybe add some sliced black truffle to it. Oh, yeah. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Sliced well, black what truffle. What are you putting that on? With, now, look, watch this. Okay. The okay. bechamel side yeah. goes on top. Okay. Sorry, the Mornay sauce Mornay. goes on okay. top. The Mornay goes on top. Let me just wash my hands, Mrs. Spielberg. Okay. Now, this one, what I put in the oven, Mrs. Spielberg, this now, it's remember, it's six inches down. You can see it's melting, okay? Yep. So what we're going to do now is turn this over to broil. When we think about making, um, when we make, uh, you know, uh, gratin, when we do that French onion soup, we do the gratin, we want to broil it. And what that does is it caramelizes the cheese and makes it really, really nutty. For the top section, we're going to take another tablespoon on each one. You can see I'm adding a tablespoon. And what this does, it, it helps the actual, um, it helps the cheese stay, because sometimes the cheese can slide off. And it's a really simple recipe. Here's what I'll say here, come to the edges. The first thing on a croque monsieur to brown is the edges, so come right to the edges. A lot of people just put it in the center and then the edges burn, so be sure to come around. Now this is this is quite soothing, isn't it? Just seeing it, yeah. just smearing it across. I love the word schmear. Schmear's me word of the day. Here he was, schmearing past himself. Coming around just like that. Susan, now, Susan and Arch want to know why we're drinking. Uh, it's, so, so, it's, it's kind of the daylight savings thing and the dog barking all night that we just yes, can't we will. Even. I, we will. <laughs> and I do want to say also with the crab one, with the crab one, I forgot to say this. Normally, I'll add a smear of boars and nice cheese. Smear? Yeah, I'll add some boars and cheese oh on there. God, we seriously. will get down. Are you naughty. joking? No. No I'm, one's getting those except no. for me. <laughs> <laughs> and she means it. I'm and it. she means it. <laughs> oh my gosh. No one is getting it. Did you hear that, ladies and jellyfish? Did you hear it? Nobody's getting that but me. It was like some voice from um, the Exodus. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, Megan wants that one too bad. you got to go with one of the other options. <laughs> this now, we would top first with the Parmesan. Burned Parmesan is awful. So you want to protect the Parmesan. Parmesan is going to add umami to this. Parmesan comes on the top, okay? Now you've got your Parmesan on there. Question, Cora wanted to know, what's with, is it just plain crab or what did you mix in with uh, it? The crab had a little bit of mayonnaise in it, small <laughs> amount of mayo. It the, is not the, low fat. There wasn't enough fat in it, so we decided <laughs> to add a little bit like of mayonnaise. Now we've got like 8,000 cheeses. Oh, yeah. this is, this oh, is just this love. Is this thing is love. This thing, I mean, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> I'll add the, I'm just gonna add a small amount of cheese to the top. Donna yeah. says I see a millimeter of an edge showing on one of those. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, get yeah. it, get it. <laughs> okay, let's check. Come over here, Mrs. Spielberg. Okay. Let's see how we're looking over here. Oh my gosh, somebody oh my call God, a please. Look at look that thing bubbling. Oh, just just look admire it's that. Bubbling. Come hold over on. here and admire that. Wait, wait, hold Actually, on. stay I'm here. Let me do an overview. Not the overview, Overhead Mrs. View. Spielberg. You oh. got so many compliments last year. Oh. <laughs> Let me put this here for a second. Okay. Now that's croque monsieur. I'm going to pop these in the pop these over here for a second. Actually, I've got I've, my eye on that crab. I got my eye on the crab. Sounds like a country music song. Brad was upset that he didn't see any uh, John Wayne moves yet today. <laughs> God, you just don't want to even try to encourage. Get them. off your horse and drink your milk. Oh. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Spielberg, that's croque monsieur. Yep. Croque Madame, yeah. Mrs. Krusty, Croque Monsieur, Mr. Krusty, Croque Madame, Mrs. Krusty, yeah? An egg. Frying an egg's easy. I don't think I've ever fried an egg. Is that true? Is I don't really like fried eggs. I like other kinds of eggs, but not Well, eggs. yes. Well, a fried egg on top is a game changer. Um, frying an egg is something that I just love to do. 
Um, first of all, when we are frying an egg, it's, it's so simple, but it's just so good when you yeah. know how to do it properly. Um, the oil's nice and warm. I can feel it's warm, yeah? There's quite a lot of oil in this. Um, <laughs> A little bit. Probably. Just adding a little more fat to the fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you get in my belly. This is, this is, a totally, this is like a once a year amazing and treat. You always put your egg, place your egg in a bowl, crack into a bowl. That way you can control the shell. And that way, if you did break the yolk, you don't have to see it. Adding the egg to the pan. Next thing we're going to do is place a lid on. A lot of people don't place a lid on and they struggle with the yolk warming up. Oh. Just place the lid on and let that cook. Just let that cook. For I've how made, long? Uh, until uh, about three minutes, okay. until it's cooked. Um, I've made some tomato soup, Mr. Spielberg. Ooh, is this the I Indian one? Yeah, this is a, um, I haven't wrote the recipe for it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I will do it in the near future. This is a tandoori tomato soup. Mm. We basically take the tomatoes because when we think about tomatoes this time of the year, they're never no good. You know, they're often just, um, well, here. Yeah, in this part of the country, I apologize. Uh, so what we want to do is the tandoori tomato soup, we actually roast the tomatoes under the broiler, yeah. uh, garlic, ginger, uh, tandoori spice, and then we blend them with some um, meti, garam masala, and things like that. I will do it in the future, we'll, we'll definitely do it. Um, the Mornay sauce, just to clarify, Mrs. Spielberg, I forgot to say, fresh nutmeg. See the fresh nutmeg in there? Yeah always traditional and then add a little bit of mustard a little bit of whole grain mustard feel free to use your yellow mustard or your dijon mustard in your recipe as well uh, but for ours we just use it and this mornay sauce you can make this the night before and just reheat it gently mm. uh, salt and pepper to taste remember as always whenever you're making one of my recipes or anyone else's recipes whether it's martha stewart emerald jamie oliver any of the fine chefs around this world alexa stop uh, any of the fine chefs from around the world you've got to season to your taste a chef only seasons how he likes it i'm going to take some of that tomato soup mrs spielberg yep. whenever we're serving soup and um, placing it into a into a, a measuring cup like this is the easiest way to pour it in a bowl if you are going over if you're going to put it use the ladle do it tap it once yeah mm -hmm. come against that stops it from dripping okay but in, into in a, um, a measuring cup it's always easier yeah okay so you can see the eggs cooking we use the lid creates steam yep. i watched this woman the other day on youtube doing one and she threw some water in it and it was from a respectable website it was just recently posted and i'm like who would teach someone to throw water in hot fat it was bonkers yeah <laughs> Not to be rude, I'm a nice person. I don't talk about people unkindly, but I was like, you're supposed to be teaching people how to cook and you're throwing water and hot oil. Sausages. Ah, oh, sausages. She's been on the are we drinky poo. Look at the that. Eggs. Where's the where's the smile? So where was this so what we want to do now, Mr. Spielberg, a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna get some salt on there. I'm gonna give a, a shout out to I saw that J um, John and Kim Bowerline are on, my friends. Hi John, Kim, hello ha. Um, so what we want to do, Mr. Spielberg, yep. is we're going to grab the egg, bring so that this egg off. makes it the madame. Madame. Just get any excess okay. oil off. Comes on top. And now you have yourself wow. a crow madame. I'm going to put this on the board, Mrs. Spielberg, because we've got to see the effect of this. We're going to show you a couple of things here, Mrs. Okay. Spielberg. I mean, if you're into that kind of egg, that looks good. Yep. And then um, you can see this. So let's just show you a couple of ways. I'm going to cut this into three. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to eat. Yeah. So look. So if you take a look at that, Mrs. Spielberg, you can see the ham, the cheese and the sauce. Oh, yeah. And it's melted beautiful because we've done it in the oven. It's perfectly cooked. Now you know as well as I do, that with the tomato soup. Let's show you the croque, madame. So if we take this one, Mrs. Spielberg, yeah. we cut through that egg, and then just take a look at this, Mrs. Spielberg. That beautiful, glorious egg is coming oh, down yeah, the side. Good too. Doesn't that look mm -hmm. good? Everything's cooked perfect. For this recipe, what we want to do is just take this, serve it with some tomato soup. To me, there's nothing cozier than that oozing cheese that beautiful oozing cheese see mm -hmm. the caramelization 
into this is some... really good for Darcy and the Dairy Council. We've got a lot of uh, yeah, got a lot of dairy yeah. in this one. <laughs> uh, we love our dairy farmers. Always, in, you know, a farmer, a dairy farmer works 365 days a year. There is no no day off on Christmas. Look at that, Mr. Spielberg. Wow. And there you have the perfect croque monsieur. This is still, still. I told you. Listen, after 40 minutes, it's still crispy no longer will you ever make a soggy sloppy croque monsieur from here on out you will always make the best one whatever you however you do make your croque monsieur please feel free to share it um next week i'm traveling i'm going down to see my daughter victoria may in florida so I won't be around, so there's no show next week. We'll have a pre-tape show. Um, so I'll be showing that next Sunday with the recipe. And then when I get back, we'll be making, um, we're going to take on popovers and Dutch babies. Um, a lot of friends have asked me, can you teach me how to make me how to make a popover? A popover and a Dutch baby are very much the same batter. One would be cooked in a frying pan and the other one will be cooked in a um, in a popover tray. Uh, once I learn you how to make these, I guarantee it will become a family favorite. My popovers are about this big and absolutely stunning. Would you agree, Mr. Spielberg? They are absolutely delicious. I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this Krug Monsieur. Until next time, always remember, it's not what happens to you, it's how you deal with it. And you feel much better when you're positive than what you do when you're negative. So true. See you soon. Thanks, everybody. We really appreciate you joining today. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.